Hi, I'm Chancellor Agard, and we're live at the 2019 EW Comic Con Video Studio, presented by Toyota Corolla, with the cast and producers of DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Thank you. there's no greater con than San Diego, than San Diego Comic Con. Um, what are you guys most excited about? Because you guys have come here for years now. Uh, that's not true. We were here last year, yeah. and the year before. The year before We've been that. coming here for We've years. been coming here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, this is my 13th Comic-Con. Um, okay. I, I love coming here, uh, both as a fan and now professionally. Um, I, I love costumes. Um, back when I wasn't pregnant, <laughs> I, I, I would dress up, and uh, most years I do have a costume, but this year I could not quite pull it off. So, uh, yes, I love costumes. I love seeing all the cosplay. I think it's so amazing what people do. She had a Batgirl costume on earlier. We were like, uh, <laughs> a little much. <laughs> It's funny, I looked down off the balcony, like down to like the hard rock float or whatever, and there was just like an army, just like it was like Batgirl and like two Robins and Jason Todd. It was really cool. Amazing. Um, I guess so you guys, I mean, we have Brandon, Dominic, and Katie, uh, the original legends from the original season one. Uh, I'm curious, I mean, five years in, I mean, did you guys think that the show would keep going on this long? Uh, first season, no. Um, mm -hmm. After we found our legs with second season, it was evident that the uh, the audience had really embraced the show and you know we're all really proud of the show now and have been for the last couple of years especially with the uh, the critics showing a lot of love and uh, you know it's it's been it's been a great ride I think we all you know the first season we were trying to find our legs and see what the show was going to be we all had great hopes uh, for what it could be and uh, and it was challenging just as any first year of a show second year got better third year was well, finally everybody's starting to have fun I think mm -hmm. and the last year was um, the most fun I think for all of us cast and crew um, and everyone involved and uh, I think the audience had the most fun and, and definitely we've gotten the most uh, acclaim and people are starting to recognize and know that the, the show is, is where, it, where it needs to be and it's found a sweet spot. Um, I mean all three of you have been playing these roles for even longer than Legends has been on the air. I mean I guess six seven years into these characters I mean what keeps bringing you back to them what are you still sort of interested in apart from the money I guess. <laughs> Work is always good, and we do have, we do have to deport, uh, we, that is always part of it, no matter how, how creatively, uh, the creativity that we want to bring um, and do every day. We're actors, we, 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 um, we need that as part of our lives to exist. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's the fans uh, playing this character for five, going on six years maybe now. Um, you know, people love Ray Palmer, and the, the it seems, and I'm grateful for them, the energy and and um, and bringing out the geekiness and people appreciating that. I get so many people talking about how how they're so happy that that's represented and they they feel represented in that way, um, and just the the positivity that he brings on a you know to the to the team. Mm -hmm. What do you think about your character? Well, Dom, thanks for asking. <laughs> this is uh, year seven for Sarah Lance. Uh -huh. Uh, and it's pretty wild because I think she's kind of done a lot. There's a lot of stories that have been told and she's she's evolved a lot as a character. And for me, the thing that keeps me coming back is is our cast, like our cast and our crew. Um, that includes you guys. <laughs> uh, we everybody like we just have a lot of fun together. Like it really is so much fun on set. You should come to set. You would love it. It's I want so to. We have so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> what I was thinking, like, I knew Brandon before the show, but I met you guys at Comic-Con along with Arthur and Victor and Franz and the original the OG mm -hmm. Legends. You know, and I had, n again, just spending time with you was so helpful because there's, like, a weird cross-pollination. Like, the more time we spend with you, the more of you that gets into the character, the more mm -hmm. you can sort of... And it's it's just it's weird that like you know each of you becomes more yourself mm -hmm. as we get to know you and then those characters become like so indelible in our minds in the room like now we we don't even have to like think like what would Ray do what's yeah. Aaron do what would Mick do which you know yeah the first season of the script we get a script and and uh, we had a lot of characters and sometimes from one version of the script to the X from the next you'd see somebody had this line and somebody else had this line and it's like well you know it was anybody could have said that they're going to have their own uh distinct way but it was all it was a lot of story 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 now have we gotten you know further into the seasons more character and and, and comes out 
Um, and uh, and now you couldn't you couldn't do the same thing because the writers are writing you know specifically to the characters even more and even more. I think our goal is that you, we could erase the slug lines and still know whose line it was yeah. just based mm -hmm. on the voices. Yes, yeah, slug so. line. That's the thank you for the terminology. <laughs> it's funny reading like you read the scripts and you can hear the person saying it. You can hear their voice when you read it. We should release some of our scripts. Yeah. For people to read, weren't some of them added to the they're library? Available to the, on, in the Writers Guild library, yeah. so we could sell them. Yeah. <laughs> I would buy them. Yeah, right. email but, me five ninety nine. But to that question, it's been really amazing since I mean I was on seasons of Arrow that both introduced you and you, and uh, it's just to see how you as characters have evolved. And again, it I has know. been this symbiotic process. But from writing Ray Palmer back then and writing Sarah Lance back then to now, it's it's. Amazing how, yeah. how much it's changed. Because you keep, you keep adding things to the characters, and it would seemingly be like contradictory that like Mick is also a romance novelist, mm -hmm. or that you know you are in love with a uh, former witch, and now and it's it, it, it but but in a weird way, it, if you do it right, it feels like it enriches these characters, and you're not undermining all the bedrock that you've established. You're just kind of. You're building up, and, 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 and people are weird in real life. The longer you talk to a real person, some people doesn't take long to get to the weird. But that's the nice thing about uh, TV is that by the time you get to season five, and especially when you're on this ship where you're surrounded by friends, there's no posturing. There's no why, why pretend to be anything other than yourself. So we are able to have these characters on TV who just, they don't give a, you know, whatever you just want. Sh shows like this only really work when the cast uh, really close, mm -hmm. you know, like we all trust each other as actors, you know, we're there for each other and we've got this beautiful rhythm now where, you know, we just riff off each other and then on a show like this, you really need that, you need to just, you know. And also there's like, there's no, there's no attitude if somebody comes up with something funny or steals no. the funny or there's steals no, the punchline, nobody's looking for the, nobody's looking for the funny and whoever gets it. Gets it, and sometimes it's multiple funnies in the, you know. Yeah. And half the time it's not in the script. And like, yeah. You see it, and we're like, yeah. oh my god, I'd never even imagine that would be a weird moment where, you know, you, you do a tiny little thing, and you're just like, it's just like found gold. Mm -hmm. When you, you give people words, and they return it back to you with, uh, you know, all kinds of little hidden surprises. Why well, they pay us the big bucks. And <laughs> hey Brandon, uh, today, just dropped the news that you're suiting back up a Superman for the crossover. Yeah. Um, one, congrats. Thanks. Two, how are you feeling about that? How did this come about? Uh, yeah, as a mix of feelings, uh, certainly at the beginning uh, when, when the, the idea was floated to me. Um, uh, but I'm very excited. Uh, you know, I, it's an opportunity for me to, to kind of um, say hello and, and goodbye to the character um, in a way that I, that I didn't get to do the first time. Being a young individual at the time, 24, 25, I thought, oh, we're going to do this. I'm going to do this for years and make multiple movies. And, and that, of course, didn't happen. So um, I'm just, you know, very honored to, to be able to, you know, do this one last time. Is this the first time that it's come up since you've been part of the Arrowverse, or as a real thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the first, uh, first, first time I was asked, and uh, yeah. So, what can you say about how Brendan Superman fits into the crossover, if anything? He's in it. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you can know for now. <laughs> and Katie, uh, also today, came out. You're making your retro debut this season as well. Congrats. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess. Ha I guess. Who have you been shadowing uh, to prepare for this? And so I, I shadowed. Uh, Bam Bam, James Bamford, who's uh, Arrow's producing mm -hmm. director, who has been really fun because I've known him since he was a stunt coordinator on Arrow when I first started. Um, and right now I'm shadowing Kevin Mock, who's our producing director. Um, it's been great. Yeah, I spent the whole summer kind of getting, getting ready for it, uh, talking to Danielle Panabaker a <laughs> lot, too. We have this whole little girls' crew of supporting each other and make sure Danny we're... directing as well? She already did last oh, season, she did. and she's doing another episode. Oh, wow. If you get another episode, that means you did a good job. <laughs> so we'll see. If season six, I'm directing another one, you guys will know I did good. And if Katie's light in a couple episodes, fans, don't get mad at us, please. Just know that she was in, like, a prep meeting or something. Yeah, we're, we're trying picking to, out props. Uh, to, to give her the best opportunity possible, which means the yeah, legends not coma. Her. And like, don't oh, F this so up. In September. I got one for you, Dom. Don't worry. <laughs> Have you guys written her Dom. episode yet? Are you now like, <laughs> we're, uh, we're breaking it right <laughs> now. We were, we were pitching it this morning as we were walking around the streets. I think, I think we might have found the hook, though, just here in San Diego. Yeah, we were inspired by something on the streets. Awesome. I guess. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, I guess finally, I guess, what are you guys most excited about for this upcoming scene? I know you guys are shooting the premiere, which is a mockumentary right now. I mean, what else do you guys have in store for us this year? 
Oh my, lots of fun. Uh, I mean, I, I, for me personally, I'm really excited about sort of bringing it back to family and that, uh, you know, at, at its core, our show is a family show mm -hmm. about this, this found, discovered family of people who love each other so dearly mm -hmm. and are also strange and wonderful and bring out the you know, the uniqueness in, in each other and celebrate it. So for me, I, I, I love that I feel like thematically we're really diving into that very intensely this year and also kind of going back to basics in a way with historical figures as our as our baddies. But never losing the humor oh, never. and the <laughs> jump the shark mm -hmm. vibe. I, I'm really excited to see uh, with them bringing Tala, mm -hmm. Zari's character back and what they're going to do with that because she's going to be a different version. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for my superpower. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for coming by. Um, Legends of Tomorrow airs mid-season on The CW, and stay tuned to EW.com for more Comic-Con coverage.